J.R.R. Tolkien, read by Edward Foster, from his book, The Visions of Albion. The elderly gentleman sat back in his old tattered armchair and puffed thoughtfully on his pipe, making the sucking motions of an old carp fish with his lips. He brought forth a ring of smoke from his mouth. He watched it drift into the dusty corner of his study, where tall bookcases, overburdened with books, leaned precariously against the walls. The smoke broke apart on a spider's web that hung in a finely woven spiral between two great leather-bound tomes of Anglo-Saxon poetry. The spider, disturbed by this acrid-smelling cloud, ran out to the centre of its web in hope of some supper, but returned empty-legged, to its dark, caligonous corner. The man shivered when he saw the arachnid, for it disturbed a dark memory buried deep in his childhood. Returning his attention to the paper in front of him, he peered at what he had inscribed in an elvish, scrawling script. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness bind them. Slowly a smile spread upon his face and a twinkle of light entered his eye. Giving another bluster on his pipe, he bent over the paper and began to write some more. As he did so, he was unaware of all the shadows taking form around him. At first they were just a blur of shapes, but then they gathered substance, and soon many figures crowded about him. There were small humans with hairy feet, warty giants with ugly faces, fire-breathing lizards, dark cloaked wraiths, and tall creaking trees, with lichen-covered faces. He was unaware of these entities as he immersed himself in his writings and didn't notice the trees that sprang up in his study. Where the shelves had been, a large wood now grew through which a grey wizard walked. J. R. R. Tolkien, in his famous novels, brought a lot of the spirit of Albion into the 20th century. He was a professor of Anglo-Saxon in Oxford and a philologist. A lot of the landscapes and characters of his Middle Earth were influenced by old English literature, poetry and its mythologies. The name of his wonderful walking trees, Ents, is derived from an old English word that meant giants. There are influences on his work from other literal sources as well, and experiences from his life also shaped his stories. Tolkien served in the Great War, but denied that his literary masterpieces, especially The Lord of the Rings, were an allegory of it. Though he did admit that his depictions of the dead marshes were a lugubrious depiction of the Somme, just as he was inspired by the literature of the past, his own work now captivates other writers and artists, and continues this unending search for the roots of Albion. In the picture, he writes the elvish script of famous lines from the Lord of the Rings. Two pipe-smoking and beer-swilling hobbits watch him do this with contented smiles. 
Tolkien's pipe smoke transforms into smaug as Bard aims an arrow. Shelob, the spider, casts a web into the books and Gollum peers over the back of the chair. A Nazgul darkens the shadows in the foreground and the dwarf hides behind the table, unaware of the troll behind him. Two Ents start the tunnel of trees that lead into the background and to the faint figure of Gandalf. On the table is the book, The Silmarillion, which was published posthumously. He worked on the stories in this epic book all his life. I'm sure he would have been delighted to see it finally reach print. I have really loved producing this drawing of dear old Tollers, and often find myself in the picture, taking a book from the shelf.